Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and uh, bumping up a few notches. Uh, in fact, today I think we should probably do a little update after the show today if we can. Uh, there's sure. so much news to cover, Tim. Uh, bottom of the hour, we're going to have Chris Harris. We have a major update on what happened in San Onofre in the blackout last Mar- last fall. And we've got some shocking news. And people need to understand that things like the smart meter, uh, there's lots of people asking for assistance on how to deal with the smart meter issue, which is an Agenda 21. We're going to kill you to save the planet BS. The fact is that we have pseudo-environmentalist maniacs that are actually mass omnicidal murderers that want to have us participate in our own mass suicide. And uh, they're doing it financially. They want to start a war in the Middle East. They're doing nothing about uh, the Fukushima disaster. In fact, they now finally are trying to commission Ban Ki-moon of the United Nations to say, oops, Fukushima isn't over. We thought it was another season. Well, no, it's not over. In fact, it hasn't even started yet because we're going to have not only hydrothermal explosions, we're going to have nuclear ones. And we had recently, last week, the burning up of the Mitsui Chemical Company in another place in Japan with a giant radiation cloud that literally, as of today, is striking America with depleted uranium. Now, nobody... I I just... uh punched uh, before we went on uh, the update, uh, the, the button on my blog, Europe. And the last story I, I uh, updated uh, was Fukushima reactor number four, parenthesis, capable of extinguishing all life on Earth, parenthesis. And what I, my comment was, actually, it's the fuel pond. Uh, the melted nuclear mess would result in a nuclear explosion as nuclear bombs go, since it's not engineered for maximum explosive force, but a disaster created mess. It would not make that big a bang, but it would, you know, still big enough. What would happen is the hundreds of tons of highly reactive nuclear fuel would make the world's mother of all dirty nukes. And the fallout, uh, of the the fallout would be the equivalent of over 1,000 hydrogen bombs, which would be spread in the Earth's atmosphere. Now, that could be a human life extinction event. And that's what we're facing uh, in Fukushima. That's, uh, it's, it's that serious. Well, it, and for uh, over a year, <clears throat> they've sat on their hands. Yeah, I don't know if you've read the, or seen the movie uh, The Children of Men that was put out about a decade ago. No. But that movie was basically a very well-acted movie that talked about the death of the youngest person who was born because all, every woman on Earth became sterile after a national and international crisis and a catastrophe that literally extinguished human fertility. And everybody on Earth mourned when the youngest person on Earth died. Now, yeah. people think that that's not possible. And I have to tell you today that reality bites and if you want to be an optimist, you have to face reality with cold, hard stares. So when I had people would come in with 90% burns and still talking to me on their body, or they'd be flying through the front of a windshield of a car or the side of a building, and you're trying to pull glass out of their chest and a chunk of glass out of the side of their head with their brain extruding, you have to be optimistic. Now, the fact is we're literally in a situation now where we're not just talking about the Earth being on life support. We're not talking about the population financially, geopolitically, environmentally on life support. We're talking about a supercritical patient where the body is actually dropping temperature and going cold. So that's how dangerous it is. And people don't realize we have the Israelis planning on an attack when it's totally irrational. We know the globalist bankers want a war because they want to drive the price of oil to $150 to $200 a barrel. We know that the, the Europe is going to collapse. It's probably going to collapse by this summer. We know that there's almost certainly Hollande will win the election over Sarkozy, and Merkel is history. She's finished in Germany. We have the, the Fukushima disaster almost certainly by the summer is going to have thermonuclear explosions, and all they need is a seven-level earthquake, which happens every six months there in Japan, in the Sendai, Japan area, and we're almost certainly going to see the collapse of the yeah, reactor core. There are pool three four. major fault zones that come together there. Right. I wrote a, another thing on an article, Russia retains the right to preemptive strike on U.S.-backed missile system in Europe. And Russia basically has given a war warning to NATO. They, they're they saying if you put this anti-missile system into operation, we will take it out with military strikes. Well, let, me tell, let, me tell strike. a, a, let me tell of a vision that I gave in the Prophecy Club and had them publish it because I didn't – I went to some cities, God said, do not give any more visions and dreams for a period of time for judgment against America. And the reason is that we had a lot of people that didn't want to receive it. For example, one of the places I went to first, uh, when I traveled to 42 cities in Israel back in 1999 with the Prophecy Club in Israel, 
was Portland, Oregon. And I saw two visions when I went in, it flew in. The first was I saw an Indian war dance where they actually went up the side of Mount Hood and they threw a na Indian native princess tied up in buckskins, thrown screaming into the open maw of the volcano. And the other one was I saw a welding shop where rail cars were being welded in with human shackles, et cetera, to have two layers or levels uh, for human transport in these rail cars. Now, what's happening in our world is so beyond the pale. People, like, as I tell people, most of the time I talk about only the 10% that I know that at least you can handle at this point. But we're going to have to start throwing off restraints on this because we now have Obama and we have now Obamni. We have the situation <laughs> of Obama where he might be removed from the electoral process, but then we have waiting in the wings probably Hillary, or I call Hitlery, Hitlery, Lilith, Rotten. Do you mean that that Get charming Satanist uh, lesbian? Uh, uh, oh well. Right. Anyway. As, as I said a few weeks ago, uh, she. You could tell from the video clip when the death of Muammar Gaddafi was announced, and they put it on the Net General News. She was having a psychic orgasm, reminiscent of her previous times up on the uh, up on the temple of Quetzalcoatl or, or the Aztec temples in Mexico, where she said they were reenacting the human sacrifice. She says, "Wouldn't it have been wonderful?" This is actually reported in the news. If I was actually there when they gouged out the heart of a victim and raised it up to the sun god. She actually oh said my. that. I mean, she, oh. we're, we're talking about somebody who is a, as we're I said... We're talking about the United has, States Secretary of State. Right, now, Former let, listen, First Lady, former Senator from New York. Now, I got to visit... This is Bill the caliber Hill. of people, by the way, we, we, we have in office right. today. Now, remember, people don't want... They want to deny the spiritual, so they say, well, Dr. Deagle, how can you be so bright to talk about uh, TRH and advanced biochemistry and toxicology and the same talk about Jesus? Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you don't have a relationship with God, if you don't have a logical mind, if you don't ex understand and accept the fact that the spiritual realm, the hyperdimensional realm is real, you're going to be swallowed up by it. You're going to be destroyed. Absolutely. So it's not imaginary. You know, I, I really get into quantum physics, and when I look at quantum physics, I look at it as a Christian. For instance, the super holographic universe uh, model where in quantum physics all, and we know that, that Unbelievable as it is, all particles are infinitely connected to all other particles it's in the called, entire universe. It's called quantum and entanglement. Quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement, yes, exactly. <laughs> right. And that is because we all are God's living, creative thought. We are right. all intimately connected to the Creator. We, we can ignore Him. We can spit on God. We can, uh, we can sin against Him in unbelievable ways, but, and we can say He doesn't exist, but He does exist, and we are connected to Him. And we either, uh, you know, we're in a battle now, the ultimate final battle, and we either go with God or we go with the fallen uh, Lucifer, the ultimate uh, pathetic loser of all times. And, you know, it is our choice. We have a choice. And you may not be perfect. I'm not perfect. I, uh, Jesus is the only person that, that, uh, that was ever really totally perfect. But that's all right. God came to save the sinners, and he wants us to have eternal life with him. And, and you have all these satanic people running around in positions of power doing all this horrible stuff. And it's very, very much a spiritual war. Uh, one thing I said today after uh, uh, what, uh, my comments on this Russian uh, re preemptive right to strike NATO missiles, I said, you know, day after day we move closer to a horrific third world war with 21st century mass destructions and more and more into fascist police state conditions in most of Europe and North America and further into the second and final phase of the greatest depression. Uh, you know, this is this is a time yeah. to get right with God. Right. Well, in fact, uh, that's why we had the fourth man in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the, if you want to call the pre-incarnated Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. And, and, and the other three survived the fire. Right. Now, we have to understand, without a relationship with God, the fire that's coming, you're not going to make it. Welcome back. Um, while we're into this discussion, I want to bring it out that in the next few weeks you're going to see a lot of guests. We're going to clarify some interesting things uh, coming up, and I just want to make a couple of announcements. Coming up next week, we're going to have Ted Shubat. 
a uh, former uh, son of a Palestinian, uh, Walid Shabbat, who has a, is a Christian, Orthodox Christian, has a very interesting perspective. He'll be coming in on Monday. We have, of course, Greg Jackson coming in on, on Monday as well uh, with Steve Dace. We're going to talk about the, the solo elections going on with the false uh, uh, alternatives we have. Tex Mars will be coming on on Tuesday. Jonathan Kahn will be coming on regarding talking about the thing called the Harbinger, the Harbinger of Destruction to America. And uh, then uh, we'll have Keisha Rogers, who's going to be running in the 22nd District on Wednesday in place of Harley Schlanger. And, uh, of course, uh, Tim, we do emergency reports on the live stream channel. I can't tell people how important it is to support us at live stream because we want to get more of these reports up. And um, we also want to thank the people who do listen to the live stream that supported us so we were able to get some uh, more computing uh, power for you and to help do what we're doing. We literally are putting our blood, sweat, and tears into this to try to get it uh, opera off the floor so that we can get a lot more immediate information out to you because you can't get it from the snooze, which means it puts you to sleep, because we are the news. And uh, uh, fact- I, uh, Along that, I, I, I want to mention before we, we before I forget, uh, and I, because this is important, um, the uh, Israeli news media is now under a, uh, a military censorship law. Uh, they are embargoing all information on the IDF uh, mobilization of its reserves, the idea of the Israeli Defense Force. Yesterday, one newspaper, uh, the Times of Israel, broke the story, uh, and uh, they broke it evidently before the censors could, could slap uh, an order on them. Uh, nobody else carried the story. It, the story has not been denied, and I'll guarantee you if it wasn't real, it would have been denied. Uh, there are none of the Israeli media is covering this story. Everybody in Israel knows about it. You know, the, the, the Jewish Mother uh, uh, Network went, went into overdrive. Uh, did you hear about uh, uh, Maple Sunge? He got called up, you know, and, and, and that, that, that word gets out very quickly. Uh, Israel's a small country. And before the end of the day yesterday, everybody knew about it. But it was not, other than the Israeli uh, Times, it was not carried by any new Israeli uh, news organization. It is not being carried today. Now, that says uh, a lot about it because uh, they are trying to make it go away. Now, they are calling up 22 brig- uh, b- battalions. That's, um, That's a lot of people. Well, it's... it's uh, something like 23, 24,000. Here's what I believe they're doing. Uh, they may put uh, a few units on the Egyptian border just, for, just in case, but what they're really doing is they're putting their strike units in place in, uh, on the border with Lebanon and on the border with Syria. Uh, about four years ago during the second Lebanon war, Israel attempted to go in and take out all the rockets and missiles that were in southern Lebanon. They failed. I knew they were going to fail. And the reason I knew, I had read that uh, Syria had bought a large number of AT-14 Comet uh, anti-tank missiles from Russia. Uh, these are like shoulder launched or launched from a position. And they slice through the, the armor of any major, any main battle tank, including all those used by Israel. And the Israelis got chewed up, and they tucked their tail and went home and declared victory. Uh, since then, they have been working overtime trying to figure out a way to be able to go in and go in quickly and seize all the launch sites. Now, I don't think they're going to be able to accomplish this. I think they're going to use helicopters extensively. I think they may, they may cross the line very quickly with neutron weapons and so forth. But I don't think they're going to be successful. In fact, I think... Everything is on a hair trigger. Uh, I think very quickly, uh, well, the, the Hezbollah, the Syrian and Iranian forces are uh, uh, fully aware that if they don't use it quickly, they'll lose it. And while they may keep some in reserve, they're going to use all their heavy stuff very quickly. And I think things could get out of hand very, very quickly. Now, uh, the, the 
forces that they're calling up now, and I don't know this for a fact, but I, I dollars to donuts, folks. These are the well-trained forces that are designed to go in to cross the border and just try to seize the launch sites as quickly as possible. This is the plan they've been working on, and they're calling all these boys up because they want them in place and ready to go. Remember, they've got to do some training before they before they cross the border. They, uh, when you have that many thousand people in the field, it takes a lot to get them, you know, to get all the, the, the ducks in a row. And that's what they're doing right now. They're putting the ducks in the row. Netanyahu is actually, he may be facing a coup. He has some of the most powerful and brilliant and toughest people in Israel lining up against him, not just former prime ministers. Yeah, and, they, and they have like four over, months, by the way, to election. It's the 4th of September, so we have four months for him to prosecute a war to get well, to the, be a but, war but president. Barack, the former prime minister and his defense minister said today that uh, it doesn't matter if there's an election coming, that that uh, won't have any effect on when and where uh, they strike Iran, and if they strike Iran. Now, here's the thing. Uh, the people that have lined up against him, it's, just, it's not just uh, the last couple people that you've heard about, Dragan and the, the, the farmer guy, the guy that just left a few months ago, as head of the internal security, the Seth Ben. There are literally a couple handfuls of farmer Mossad and Seth Ben and military intelligence. You're talking about Shin Bet. Shin Bet. Shin Bet. Shin Bet. And, yeah. and, and my Hebrew is non existent. And. Uh, uh, the IDF. There are former IDF chiefs involved in this. They are vehemently opposed to what Netanyahu and his apostles, Lieberman and Barack, are trying to do. Uh, Netanyahu is following the globalist agenda, which means they start a war in the Middle East, the Third World War, and of course Israel will go down along with the the, the Arab and Muslim <clears throat> countries in the Middle East. The yeah. the the uh, Dragon and all these people, they're not globalists. They're Israelis. They care about their people, their tribe, their country, and they see this insanity that uh, Netanyahu is following, and they are vehemently opposed to it because yeah. they've spent their lives trying to defend Israel. Well, and, you know, you know I, I remember the words of Jesus where he actually was teaching the Sermon on the Mount. He says, I, I wish you, O Jerusalem, would gather like chicks under me as if a mother hen, you know, uh, but you would not. And, it, you know, you see the lamentation of Jesus already trying to see the future and seeing Israel. Israel is now coming up very quickly to the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, I want to deal with a couple of issues that I'm going to deal with was when I have some of these other guests on. And it's very important because your very brilliant analysis lays the groundwork for this. Number one, <clears throat> the, the tribe of Judah includes the Khazarians. A lot of people try to say it doesn't include the Khazarians. They intermarried with the Jews so much they have Jewish blood. Most of the Palestinians, and this is something that most people that are, quote, Jewish don't want to hear this, are not only identical, but many of them have even more identical blood to the ancient Hebrews because they were put to the sword, their relatives, and forced to convert to Islam, or they became Christians and later forced to become Muslim. Well, it's like what Romero he says, they're the relatives of Jesus. Exactly. So the fact is that the scattered tribes who went off to Europe and so on became the Scotsmen, the Irish, the British, they're all the lost tribes of Israel. All intermarried and all interbred, like Jezreel, the seed scattered. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, yeah, we need to actually counteract this, what I call uh, false prophets, false teachings in the church and false geopolitical analysis. In fact, this is what drives American policy, which is a false eschatology from back from the Schoenfeld Bible. And in fact, we have various of these people that believe, the Judaizers, they call them, that don't believe in proper Judaism, where the word Jew means to praise God and to be the southern tribe of Judah and the half tribe of Benjamin, which means to build up the house of. And the northern ten tribes are Israel, which became literally scattered by the Assyrians as far as away as the Hebrides, which are the Isles of the Hebrews in Scotland, the Book of the Kells, which is written in ancient Aramaic, 2,800 years old, and the sticks in the Edinburgh Castle that indicate they were made in Aramaic, because all the tribes of Europe 
were the tribe lost tribes. But they all intermarried, just like the intermarriage of the Khazarians that turned to Judaism and became genetically Jews. But the fact is, there's no such thing as pure blood. But it goes back to the prophecy of Joseph, which is the coat of many colors, that at the time of the tribulation of the starvation, because we're at the end of the fat years, the fat years are over. We're quickly coming to the seven lean years, which are going to start in full force when the peace treaty is signed, when the Oslo Accord is culminated by the next president of the United States, because we know the, <clears throat> the only one that has the authority of the Sanhedrin that's currently reconstituted in Israel is a U.S. president. And if he's Obama, if Obama gets back in, he is, this is a thus saith the Lord, the false prophet, and if it is Romney, the only alternative to the abominator, then he is the rider of the white horse. Just like the white horse prophecy given to Joseph Smith, who headed the satanic cult of Mormonism. And people will say it's not a cult. I said, yes, it is. It's a UFO cult where you do a temple uh, ceremony in front of someone that play acts as Satan, reading Doctrine and Covenants and Bruce McCauley's yeah, Mormon Doctrine. It was Doctrine. a cult, but it was also a bunch of old so and so's that wanted to have a harem of young uh, uh, women, so called yeah. wives. <laughs> but with it goes Francis beyond that because it, it goes even beyond that because even when uh, they don't it didn't have come them as from wives. God. No, it didn't come from God, but it even goes beyond that. It's more evil. They actually do this special ceremonial grip of other people's wives and actually seal themselves to other people's wives. So even though they're not physically married to them, they're married to them spiritually, so they'll have them as spiritual prostitutes in a harem in heaven. That's how bizarre this is. And this is the person in his magic underwear we're going to have as our so-called president. And as the I, I predict that the the uh, the evangelical Christians who make up a significant percentage of the GOP electorate, uh, as the campaign goes on, are going to be absolutely shocked that there is a Republican candidate who is not a Christian. Uh, well, neither is Obama. Obama. Obama well, is. Obama is. Uh, Obama. Is, I, I don't even know who Obama. What Obama's real name is. I don't know who his <clears throat> father is, and I don't know who his mother is. Why don't we call him Hey You in the White House? <laughs> uh, the latest story is his mother' uh, real name was Joanne Newman. She was Jewish, and uh, her his father was uh, uh, Malcolm X, the commun the black communist uh, leader. Oh, but who knows? Uh, I yeah, know that even if, every if his photo... father was a, if his father was from Kenya, because I've talked to, uh, to Professor Corsi before and after he came and did his research and was abused by Odinga and needed spinal surgery. Uh, if you look at the genetics of his father, it's actually public record. He's only eight point seven five percent black, and the rest he's forty two percent or whatever. Uh, 42 percent, 42 percent Arab, and and 50 percent white. So he's more white than Arab, and he's almost no black genes at all in him. So if he if he was who he says he is, he was born in Kenya. He's basically an, a white Arab American that pretends to be a black, and he's actually a high level if, 32nd degree Mason and, and who's a Satanist. He, if, and, if he was <clears throat> born there, or the very fact that his father was born there, makes him a yeah. British. Subject and British subjects under a law passed around the War of 1812 are not considered native-born citizens under the Constitution. That law was right. never changed. That's right. Uh, there, there's all kind of the, the, yeah, in other words, thing even if you don't deal with one way, is, is yeah. not going away. Every photo of Obama and his family from when he was a child has been photoshopped. Now that is that's that's the the mother of all giant red flags. There's something deeply, deeply wrong there. Yeah, really, really Obama really wants wrong. to denude America of ninety percent of its atomic weaponry unilaterally. Oh well, we'll get rid of ninety percent of our bombs. Hope you guys do the same. Gee, hope you don't attack us. Gee, because when you lose ninety percent, you don't have a backup. If your if the, your remaining ten percent is taken out in the first strike, you don't have anything to hit back. Back, so that means you're very prone to being uh, destroyed in a first strike. And I mean that, that that's insane. That's well, well, you got to remember, I had uh, three years ago a physicist and his wife who met other physicists from Russia after the fall of the Soviet Union in Glasnost and Perestroika. And they were members of the GRU and KGB, and they said <clears throat> that Obama was a member of the Russian Communist Party, was a communist, 
had traveled internationally, that, that he would be our future president. And we know that he is, remember, remember Gorbachev, Gorbachev was a globalist first and a Russian dictator second. Gorbachev received a professorship after the fall of the Soviet Union because he was deeply ensconced in the globalist regime. That's why we have this Nobel Prize winning, and you hear him gurgling away with his little mark on his on his head. You know that Gorbachev was one of the architects with the Green Cross, the largest NGO on Earth for vaccines on Earth, largest vaccine pushing entity on Earth, with lots of funding from none other than Bill Gates and the United Nations to force vaccinate Sub-Saharan Africa and elsewhere to sterilize them, and none other than Mr. Mikhail Gorbachev, who had literally passed the Green Cross and violates everything that we want to consider decent the about Russia. The number of, <clears throat> of human, uh, let's slaughter the, the sheeple, let's whittle down the sheeple agendas that are operating is absolutely amazing. Big Pharma is full of them, Big Agra is full of them, uh, the so genetically modified water to, stuff. The, the, yeah, the radiating food. Uh, and then here in California, the legislature is considering a law that will force not only force vaccines on your children, up to 75 vaccines on adults. And I'm going to tell you, if they try to force vaccinate me or my children, I got a shot for them, but it's going to be mainly made of lead. <laughs> they may die of lead poison. They're going to die. And only that, legally, I, we're going to file I, so I many don't actions. Remember, I have read the Constitution <clears throat> more than once, you know, front to back and all that. I don't remember where it says you can you can do that in the U.S. Constitution. Well, you know, the thing is, Maybe when I, I talked missed to, that part. When I talked to the school nurse, oh, they know him in a problem at all because they realize that Dr. Deagle is like dealing with the Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm not Bambi. And I'm going to sue them. I'm going to be armed to the teeth, and I'm coming after them. And I'm not just going to say, bad public official, bad doctor, bad nurse. No, no, no. I'm going to sue them, put their ass in jail, and seize their assets. And may, and may they have a well, nice day. remember, you know, if you can't do it in this country, there's universal, many courts, many, many countries, including the United States, agree that there is such a thing as universal human rights jurisdictions, and we will enforce... Uh, findings in well, foreign countries put it this way. against our government officials. Well, sure, uh, Sheriff Arpaio is the right. example. The first thing I tell people to do is get your concealed carry permit, get your food and water. We are uh, adding some new suppliers. We have the Ready Store. We'll soon have another major supplier of food. We're also looking at getting a supplier of emergency kits. We tell people to get involved with your cert hey, program, with your fire department. On? Before we forget, is Chris coming on? I'm not certain. We will see if he's... Uh, Chris, are you there? I'm here. Yes, I am. Oh, okay, hi, very Chris. good. I, I want to finish this with, uh, the with, CERT program, with, with which go. is certification. <laughs> you need to get with your fire department, your uh, uh, volunteer fire department, <clears throat> and also get involved with your sheriff. Sheriff Opayo is what I call the greatest hero of our modern day, and he needs to come up with this quickly before they don't kill him like Mr. Andrew Bybar. Yeah, yeah. I understand he's got some really hot stuff, but oh, yeah. uh, yeah, I hope yeah, he then, comes then, out and comes out with it soon. He needs to come I want to hear it from you, Chris. You've got some shocking information about what happened in San Onofre in the new report. And when we come back, we're going to hear that report because the state of our nuclear facilities around America is shaky at best and catastrophic at worst. And what happened here at San Onofre can be repeated at the New Madrid Fault, Diablo Canyon, and the San Jacinta Fault Zone right off of the coast of Southern California near Orange County. And send no for a reactor. Back in a moment. And joining us, our nuclear expert, uh, his pen name, I would say, uh, not his real name, is Chris Harris, because he really is a nuclear safety expert. Uh, Chris, we've got some shocking new news, and I guess uh, one of the things that I do is I study things, and I read, and I analyze all the opinions of experts like yourself and others. And then I pray. And what I got in prayer was that the tube design was defective, and when the power blockout occurred, it further degraded and destroyed the tubes. And the uh, company, uh, Hitachi, that made these tubes designed, which they put more like-for-like uh, -like tubes than were even originally designed in it, they only are on the hook for $135 million, when in fact it cost $600 million per turbine to change it over the last two years. These tubes had incredible de de degradation, which means there's no integrity. They were venting off not only tritium, but other isotopes for years from San Onofre. And now they can't reactivate the plant. They've been trying to say, well, maybe we can just block off some of the tubes. 
The fact is, this is now sitting off the San Jacinta fault zone, which they say can create a 7-plus earthquake, which will totally destroy the plant and integrity and release radiation to 8.5 million-plus people in Southern California, all the way from San Diego to Los Angeles. Yeah, well, you, you've been saying that for a really long time, and I think we've got evidence now. That we have evidence true, to prove it now. So I want you to say that first, and then we need to touch on what's going on with Fukushima, because as they say, you know, in the movie with, uh, you know, uh, the giant whale, you know, Moby Dick, and you ever you watch the scene where it's where where somebody's up near the mast with the, with ready to throw the the, the whale, uh, you know what do they call it, the whale spear, harpoon. She, and they were harpoon. They were to say she's ready to blow. If she needs a blowhole, the whale is showing. Guess yeah. what? Fukushima is ready to blow. Well, Unit 4 is certainly, uh, not only did we discuss that really a long time ago, that the state of collapse and the, and the actual integrity of the spent fuel. Remember, all of the fuel in Unit Whoa. 4 was stored in the spent fuel pool at that time since it was undergoing refueling. And you right. remember, all I was that, a big that's why on the spent fuel. I yeah. Here's what here. happens. We have an uncontrolled, with no shielding at all, and nothing, pool. And absolutely nothing over and not, 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 nothing the atmosphere. Good. And, and, uh, and what we have is a, an agglomerated concordium. This is not like Three Mile Island or Chernobyl where it was blown apart or there was some problem with managing it. When this corium comes together, we now have neutron beams that are going out 20, 30 miles from the site, and they heat the nitrogen in the air, creating blue beams. The nitrogen causes the formation of tritium and deuterium, which slows down neutrons. So we're going to have not only hydrogen explosions for the zirconite-generated uh, tritium and hydrogen, we're also going to have nuclear explosions. They're very poorly made, but very heavily loaded up with the largest amount of dirty radioactive material in the history of mankind ever. And, we're talking and, about an uh, amazing amount of nuclear material. So I, I'm going to predict that we're going to have a, an explosion in the range of, say, two kilotons that will be a very dirty bomb. It may even be a stuttering explosion that occurs not only just once, but maybe multiple times over centuries, and that they have no plan at all to deal with it. And they're now talking about, quote, evacuating 40 million Japanese, but guess what? That radiation cloud is going to salt the entire the Northern Hemisphere. So people who are not experts in radiotoxicology and have weigh in and make statements that it's not a problem and the radiation isn't going to bioaccumulate a kind of problem, like Joel Skousen who mentioned his newsletter saying that Mrs. Consolo was wrong when she said it was this dangerous. Okay. I'm sorry, Joel, you're out of your line. 99% of what you say is right on the mark, but when you talk about nuclear stuff, that's Dr. Deagle's territory and Chris Harris' territory. And let me tell you, having worked with people around Rocky Flats, nuclear reactors in central Illinois and Savannah River, you got to show respect for radioisotopes, just like you know as a safety expert. You don't, as they say in the old song, you do not piss into the wind. This is dangerous. Yeah, and uh, I guess, uh, Tim, you were discussing that uh, article about uh, the um, an extinction-level event for Unit 4. I, I caught that. Right, um, right. Yeah, well, I, I really uh, think that we're we're going to look at a, a literally a literal, and it could take a while because the open, silent, and invisible maw of the Fukushima Zilla monster is ready to consume mankind, and it may do it in a whimper. We may find, like, oh, gee, all the women in Japan are sterile, or all their children are coming up with deformities, so they're advised to all be sterilized. And what I hadn't sent you were some recent articles on... And the, then the next thing uh, will be, they'll say... ...that are we, being found we, in people we, in the right. Chernobyl region, and, and that, unfortunately, I, I expect to see... Right, and here's what I expect like next. I expect birthing centers will develop new technology for Japanese, where women don't have to have the burden of pregnancy. They can submit their gametes and have polar body exclusion to make sure in a shielded laboratory environment their children can grow safely in an artificial uterus and come up with those genetic defects and be young, healthy little Japanese these kids, bouncing with their little leotards on and playing music and singing songs about Fukushima. People well, say, Dr. Deagle, you're a little over the top. I said, no, no, like the guy on, on network that says, I don't just want my steel belted radios and my color television. You know, I want to be left alone. No, people need to wake up. The apathy of the public is, is the silence is killing me. The fact that we don't have more people, we have a few people now like Senator Wyden up in Oregon that are sort of panicking saying, Oh, my God, I went there, and it was a lot worse than I thought. And oh, my God, we're going to get poisoned. What University of California, Chris, San Diego, found 1% of the sulfur, 1% of the sulfur that came from Fukushima landed just in San Diego, not even in North County, San Diego, or Los Angeles. 1%, that's radioactive sulfur 35. 
Uh, this is a bioaccumulating monster that's going to continue doing it, not even for decades, not even for centuries, not even for millennia. This could be spewing radiation for millions of years. Uh, uh, Chris, what did you think of the article, uh, uh, Reactor 4 Capable of Extinguishing All Life on Earth? Well, I certainly think that reactor number four can release all of the material that's in there now if it's uh, subject to a seismic event, and it certainly is likely that a seismic event will do that. How, how so, much plutonium um, do you think you have to have to kill an individual? I, uh, I, I, much... I, think, I think it's going to happen. I mean, I think all of the uh, radioactivity in, is, that's in that pool is, is uh, in uh, jeopardy of coming out, and there's no yeah, way... Yeah. Stop Chris, how, right now, so how many plutonium atoms do you think you need in order to kill a person? Uh, one. One, one. As, I, as I remember, one. it's in the right one. location, or the one. wrong location. If you get one plutonium that, let's say, embeds in your central nervous system or your lungs or heart or your bowel or your liver, you're finished. You're done. Uh, the card is written. You don't have the chisel date of the death certificate or on your tombstone, but you're done. Yeah, now that one that that one <clears throat> atom is going to sit there and radiate, and, and you will die. It's like having a Fukushima blasting out neutrons and frying DNA and creating weird stem cells and dismethylating forever. It's Chris, like how a, many tons it's of like a death uh, star uh, inside uh, your cells are in that pond in number four? I have those figures, Tim. I don't have them memorized. Okay. Well, I, I have some hundreds of tons, thousands <clears throat> of metric tons. Okay. Yeah, what I've heard is that there's an equivalent amount to make of plutonium detonated nuclear bombs, not just hydrogen bombs, 92 to 93,000 mm. bombs, with the equivalent of 10 to 12 pounds of highly fissionable plutonium able to well, make a bomb. We think of it in terms of curies of radiation, and at that point, at very high energies, that will be released, and that's that's really the proper way to dis to descri yeah. describe no, what's in there. Uh, that's why I say I, well, I we, we're not exaggerating when you say that the Pacific could become the plutonium sea. Well, we're already seeing that kelp is seeing uh, particles, hot particles in it, all the way across uh, into the off the coast of Washington State. Well, they already reported UC Irvine in Orange County, and people say, "Oh, well, you poor people on the West Coast, you're getting blasted." I said, "No, no, 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 no." In fact, somebody the other day said this. I said, "No, correction, correction." They may be getting more more radiation landing in Bosnia from Chernobyl than landing in Southern California. It depends on where the currents go, whether it rains from the atmosphere, whether there's mountains. For example, most people don't realize when you look into the RadNet, the highest radiation levels are in Boise, Idaho, and in Colorado. And it's because these mountains literally rake out the radioisotopes at higher altitudes. And, and those that's the airborne can... release, but it's not right. talking about the waterborne release, too. It, it's, it, it's just as significant, the aqueous release. Exactly. You know, Which reminds me of the biblical uh, uh, say from the book of Revelation. It says, uh, then the waters will be made bitter, bitter as in Chernobyl, the bitter wood, bitter. Uh, and, uh, yeah. you well, know, we're going to have, <clears throat> next week we're going to have John, Jonathan Kahn on. And he talks about, and I'm not going to give all of the, you know, steal his thunder, but he's got some amazing things to talk about, the, the harbinger, which is a warning by God to tell America to repent. Now, remember, Israel was the first republic, which is the only acceptable government by God. Not a democracy, not an autocracy, not an aristocracy, not a scientific dictatorship. Only a republic where the least, the unborn and the elderly, where everyone is protected. Everyone has health care. Everybody has a social safety net. Everybody has safety of person and property. Everybody has absolute ownership and is a sovereign because they're made in the image of God, which the Constitution said. And America is under judgment because we have a deconstructing president who's finishing off the job with NDAA, CISPA, and everything else to destroy the last shreds that we are made and have our rights from our Creator God. And they're doing nothing nothing about Fukushima or Fukushima in America. We're going to have on the program coming up soon. Tomorrow we'll have Teresa Pantanella and uh, she'll be on our, our preparedness panel. You don't want to miss it. And coming up after the show live stream with Kim Alexander. Thank you, Chris Harrison. Thank you for listening. Take action.